This video is brought to you by CoolStuffInc.com, where you can find cool stuff in stock. Hello, and welcome back to another day in the arena. It's me, it's CGB, and it is another beautiful day in the arena. Why? Because a hero of the control archetype and a hero of the great nation of France, Jean-Emmanuel Duprat, MPL member, pro magic player, has taken the number one spot on the mythic ladder with a blue-white Yorion deck. Tweeted about it. Epic. So without further ado, this beautiful masterpiece. I have a lot of my own decks. I'm always excited to play them. But sometimes you just gotta... You just have to net deck because you're so inspired. You're so in love with what you see. And it's not every day Sky Noodle rises to the top of the ladder. So let's have a moment to just bathe in it and play Yorion, the Sky Nomad, and see how high we can fly. Is this the best deck in the format right now? It's interesting because as soon as Omnath was banned, out came the Ember Cleaves. And they dominated for a few days. But then people figured out that, like, Rogues is really very, very good. And it drove away a lot of the Embercleave decks who have to tap sometimes four mana to put an Embercleave on a creature. And Drown in the Lock just either blows up the creature or counters the Embercleave. Or a bunch of other bad things happen and the Rogues deck out tempos you. So, Rogues pushed away the Embercleaves. What happened next? People figured out that escape cards wreck the rogue deck and that mid-range decks with escape cards just drown the rogue decks in value. So out came Croxa, lots of red-black Croxa, as well as escape cards sneaking into other archetypes. So what happens next? The decks that create onboard value instead of in the hand or in the graveyard value start showing up. And those decks are... Yorion decks. Also Great Henge, I think, counts as this as well. But in the heads up between Great Henge decks and the Yorion decks, there's a super weapon. Elspeth Conquers Death. A card that has been forgotten as mid-range has been almost unplayable. But Elspeth Conquers Death just absolutely crushes the mid-range mirrors where people are trying to resolve and maintain powerful permanence. And the rest of the deck... The card choices, everything about it, grindy, grindy, grindy. Not worried about the fast meta as much anymore, although we have some good cards for it. Glass Casket is fine. Omen of the Sun, Skyclave, Apparition, Baron, Telerian Archmage, all those things help slow the game down. But against Embercleave, you see, we don't have instant speed interaction to stop Embercleave, really. Just some mystical disputes. That's usually not going to get it done. So this deck isn't thinking much many Embercleave thoughts. Which, for me, in best of one, that's usually a mistake. But, with the way the meta is going, maybe there's a chance that this is the right way to do it. Uh, I love so many things. If you look at every card in this deck sans perhaps Mystical Dispute and Amiria's Call, if you have a battlefield with some amount of any of this, doesn't Yorian just... <laughs> Boom! I, just, uh, I love it so much. I love it so much. So, yeah. Ask yourself the question, is it Yorianable? If so, let's play with it. Maze Mind Tome. Love this card. You can put it on three counters and just leave it there and wait for Yorian to reset it if you want more value with your value on top of the value. Thassa. So many decks can't do anything about Thassa right now. Like, Gem Razor doesn't do anything about Thassa right now. Just nothing. And neither does the entire red-black Croxa deck until they put Virica's Libation in their sideboard or something. So Thassa, Blinking, Charming Prince, Baron, Skyclave, Yorian, you know, doing the loop thing. Epic. Absolutely epic. And I've been surprised by how aggro the deck can get when it casts Amiria's Call. Very sweet play. And another thing I love is that we're figuring out some things about the DFCs, the double-faced cards. A lot of them aren't very good. It's just not worth the price of playing too many tap lands in your deck to play a lot of these double-faced cards. 
So you see no Jwari disruption. You see no messing with the, the blue-white mana base. You see tap lands that produce both to make sure you can cast Baron and Skyclave, and those are the only lands we want to be tapped. The rest, untapped natural mana. It's pretty smart. I, I've got to say, I've been slowly moving in that direction. You saw my blue-white control deck. It only had four Seagate restoration, no other special land. Like, I'm feeling this. I like this. The sideboard. The best of one board. Do we need to make adjustments to play this deck in best of one? The sideboard is one of the things I love most about the Jean Emmanuel Dupra build. Look at these cards. Two Dream Trawler, Whirlwind Denial, Mystical Dispute, Negate, Essence Scatter, Revoke Existence. The deck can pivot from a Yorian Blinky Battlefield deck into a hardcore Drago counter control deck after after sideboarding for the matchups where the Yorian plan isn't a great plan. And the best example of that is Ugin. Decks with Ugin, Ugin when it came out in M21, kind of wiped Yorian off the tier one competitive map right there. Because it just... When it sweeps the board, when Ugin gets out there and sweeps the board, your Yorian and all the things it was blinking, game over. So against that deck here, we sideboard in the negates and the disputes and it's good stuff. I don't think I need any of this for best of one board. I want to try the deck as it is, just a complete Yorian combo machine, and then worry about adding the right reactive spells later. The two mystical disputes in the main I think are somewhat genius because... One of the only things that can give you a hard time are blue decks that just try to counter your Yorian, and if you have a Mystical Dispute, then you're good. And there's only two of them. It's only two reactive, like, instant speed cards in the whole in the whole deck. So I'm down for trying the Mystical Disputes, because they can be such a breaker in the mirror that Neutralize can't be, because it's really hard to get to a spot where you cast Yorian and Neutralize, and the opponent only has one counter spell available. It's not hard to get to a spot. Like, think about it. Solemn gets you to five mana. The next turn you play your sixth land you play your yorian with one blue open the opponent has three mana open they cast their neutralize you dispute it i love it all right i have now introduced all the things that are yorian i am very curious to see how this does in best of one i'm pumped for the list congrats to mythic number one sean emmanuel Dupra. check him out look him up he's on the mplmagic.gg page he's got a twitter you can follow it that's where he tweeted the deck let's dive in let the nonsense begin. On the play with two sad robots and an omen and a mystical dispute, we'll give it a try. I do feel like there might be a lot of do nothing. I'm nervous about that. But on the play, that's so much better than on the draw. I think we can just kind of play with it, see where it goes. Our opponent leaves on the spike field hazard. Could be a few things. Will we find an untapped land off the Omen of the Sea? I'm going to gamble that we do and play the untapped land here and try to save the cove for later. Red, green, robbing the rich. Well, we have the same number of cards in hand, so this doesn't steal anything, so we don't have to worry about the Omen. But that won't last for long. That's not an untapped land. How about a Charming Prince to try to block the robber? I think that there's a really good chance of a Bone Crusher Giant, but all of our stuff is two toughness, which is extra scary. Let's see, next turn. Do I want to draw both of these? That's really slow. I think I should try for an untapped land. But I think the Prince, I think playing the Prince and getting in the way is a good idea. We can also try to scry for that untapped land. I would rather gain the life by far, but there we go. So we know that the opponent's going to exile a top card, so we're going to keep the planes there and then draw the island. We don't know they are. We're on five cards, but they could. It, it could happen. There's the Bone Crusher Giant. Does opponent have the land? Yes. Another tap land. This one a turn timber symbiosis. And we get to keep our land. Yay. Well, we're shuffling the other one away anyway. No big deal. Let's see how many Bone Crusher Giants you have up your sleeve, opponent. Behold the value. The sad robot value. 
Ooh, blanking a robber of the rich feels so good. There was a time where people were putting stuff on the battlefield regularly, and robber of the rich wasn't that good in that world. Then the world changed. It became all about Uro and cards like that. And then Robber of the Rich was pretty good because it got to steal things regularly and it rarely got blocked. Mm -hmm. If situations like this happen too often, people will have to re-examine if Robber of the Rich is still a good card. Because that's definitely a trade I will take and the opponent is really leaning on this Clothis. Like, this Clothis is supposed to do the work. Unfortunately for the opponent, I have an Elspeth Conqueror's Death. And Clothis is much less impressive. Amiria's call to the battlefield. That way we still have Solemn and Prince in the graveyard. Alright, Robber returns. This one steals an Omen of the Sun. Not the worst. And the opponent's going to play it. They must not have much going on in their hand where a few 1-1s one are good for them. That or they really like stealing things. We're on 7. We could get the Yorian and then bring a Prince out next turn and start a loop, but we lose the Elspeth Conqueror's death, but we still have Omen of the Sea. Not bad. I think that's the play. Now we could hold up Mystical Dispute to counter Embercleave, but if the opponent just goes land Bone Crusher Giant, we get blown out. I guess we can also have an Omen, so we can hold that too. That's pretty solid. Save the Thassa. Save the Solemn as well. Alright, well, opponent hits the untapped land, no problem. Is this Embercleave? If it is, it's not a very big one. Whether or not to hold up Mystical Dispute, I think we take the damage. Yeah, we can wait on this. The Omen will rebuild the life total. Alright, can't dispute that. Can dispute this. Now we got the Dispute spent. Ooh, we drew an Elspeth Conqueror's Death. Alright, bring that back. Give me a plus one, plus one counter. I'll gain three life, because right now getting attacked into the ground is the worst thing that can happen. And begin Yorion loops. There's a lot going on over here. It seems kind of good to play an ECD and then be able to blink it next turn. Seems very good, actually. Also feels good to play the Solemn and the Omen. But we could get Ember Cleaved right out of that situation. All right. Let's remove the big creature. I think this is the safe way to play it. Unfortunately, we end up with two unspent mana. If the opponent Ember Cleaves this turn to kill the Prince, we can Yorian blink the Elspeth Conqueror's Death and exile the Ember Cleave. And if we draw an untapped land, we can also play Omen of the Sun, start some life gain. Yep, that attack feels cleavy. Okay, just a Bone Crusher Giant. I accept. And replays. Alright. Well, they played that Bone Crusher right into the Yorian Blink. And we drew the untapped land. Things are about to get really tough for the opponent. Those islands can go to the bottom. We have a lot of mana. Drawing more synergy for the Sky Noodle. Oh wait, hold on. Yorion! Did it. Did the thing. <laughs> Scavenging ooze. They came from my graveyard. How dare you. How dare you violate the sanctity of my graveyard. Another Emeria's call. Ooh, it makes angels. It also makes land. So I think we're playing 
Skyclave Thassa this turn, exiling the Scavenging Ooze. Oh yeah. <laughs> That's all you need to see. All right. Rule down. We've got a casket. The rest of this is really expensive and super awkward. Let's do it. Gonna lean into this casket and these five mana plays. Because we will get there. I believe we will get there. If we can't get run over early, man, can we steamroll people late. Ooze. All right. Welcome to the box. Got the tap land out of the way. This is the food deck, the mighty food deck, which we showcased yesterday. Thank you for the overwhelming support for Opponent Appreciation Day, but that's over. We don't appreciate this opponent. We destroy this opponent. Kazandu Nimuth. Might hit me for five. We're holding up Dispute instead of buying Yorian. I think that makes sense to all the blue mages out there. No land? No land, Captain. Get out of here. Get out of here with that stone coil nonsense. <laughs> Mono green. Bye bye Now play another one, please. Yorian awaits. He oh, no! Can't can't ECD that. I should probably still, I should still play an ECD though and to keep this floating. Or not play an ECD, play a Yorian. The hand's redundancy is really kicking in. All right, we're a few good dark, we're a few good draws from awesome, but hopefully they'll show up. How do we get rid of this stupid ooze? It's messing with my ECD, get back my stuff. I'm gonna have to draw an answer. Balls. Although, that does mean we can get rid of the, uh, the ooze now. Thanks to, yes, you guessed it, another Elspeth Conquers death. How many Yorians? Can one deck have? Four more turns. Four more turns of punching you in the air with Sky Noodle. Nice. Three. Tick tock, tick tock, tick tock. So this blink, the way that we um, ordered it, is going to allow us to keep the ECD off the battlefield during the opponent's turn when they would potentially play a creature into a gem raiser. So you see there. So they can't target it at least for this turn. And if they play anything like at the right casting cost, the ECD comes back and kills it. So we time walk the opponent in a way. Now we can attack down to eight. So do we let the ECD go? We could, but we could also play this Yorian and keep the ECD around for one more round. And since it took the opponent's turn last time, I think we should. We also get to reset the tome, so let's scry with the tome. Amiria's call, that should just end the game. The, the four fours will probably attack the opponent to death. All right. Oh, I forgot to turn on full control. Oh, never mind. I scryed to the top anyway. I don't need full control. We don't have the mana available to draw, and I don't want to scry, so we'll hide the tome as well. Oh yeah, you're in a you're in a tough spot. I don't I don't envy the mono green opponent here. Tome comes back, my turn. Call off the top. Let's go ahead and cast it. Rawr. 
Angel Warriors. Opponent scoops it up. That'll get him. That'll get him. Okay, this hand is slow. If we draw a white source, we do have a turn two removal. If we don't, hopefully we can find one and have a turn three removal. That's normally, it's, it's like really close. It's borderline for on the draw. Mathasa doesn't do anything. The Yorian will do stuff. Ah, uh, keep. Uh, you guys have figured it out by now. Whenever it's close for me, I keep. I just do. Mic adjustment. Do you like it like this? A little more like this, hmm? Black mana. White mana. Are you clerical in nature? All right, omen first. It digs deeper. <laughs> Milking the moment for tension. Is there a white source in my top three? Is there any land in my top three? Slow roll. Slow roll. Just gonna dance at you. I'll get your attention. There it is. All right, do we keep an Elspeth Conqueror's death? We need more land badly. ECD though is a solution to a lot of things and whatever our opponent is doing, I feel like I'm going to need it. Because they're not playing small creatures. So what are they gonna play? Large something else's. That's the nature of magic. So do we get the tome down or do we play a prince and scry two? I mean, this is effectively a scry two as well. Plus, over the next two turns, we can scry a few more times if we need to. I think that's a good deal. Upkeep stop in case we don't find a land. Whoa, opponent takes their draw step, then sacrifices passage. I mean, I'm going to do a happy dance for that. Means your land is tapped this turn. <laughs> okay, bro. I oh I that's they forgot to sack the passage. That's a shame, Scoop. They they tanked so long. They tanked so long when I played the omen, and then they forgot to sack the passage. <laughs> that's a shame, Scoop. I don't know about all of you, but this new microphone position seems to be creating the richest, smoothest. CGB vocalize vocal quality yet caskets on the draw great so what do you guys think of the channel trailer it, it is the channel trailer that's what it was made for by Maddie B the one in best of one video I threw up in the middle of the night so as to attract as little attention as possible tongue in cheek But yeah, I hope you enjoyed it. The comments are very positive. There are, of course, the haters. Oh no. Guys, CGB. So egotistical. My god. Let it be known. I'm aware that I also lose games to many of the people I highlighted my victories over. It's my freaking channel trailer. Maybe someday... Maybe someday, just as a prank, I'm, I'll put up like an epic trailer of me just getting crushed. <laughs> For your amusement, right? Because at the end, I really am here to entertain you again and again, whatever it takes. Don't need the life. Let's dig. Baron? Baron doesn't look like Baron's doing anything, but Omen of the Sea, that's a card. That, this card, man. People are all up on Elspeth's Nightmare all of a sudden. Card that has done mostly nothing in meta for a long time. 
now here it is everywhere. People are into it. People are into it. Sad robot. They really miss Oath of Kaya. I guess I can see where they're coming from. The Nightmare has some of that built in, but the life gain from Oath of Kaya and the ability to go face was really important. Ladies and gentlemen, we has Planeswalker. I'll drop off one of these caskets. I think that makes sense. Opponent drops off a Heartless Act. Attack the Lily. We're going to lose our graveyard. Should I pick up the Sky Noodle? I think so. I think this is the play. Opponent nails the graveyard. Let's see what they've got here for follow-up. Their Doom Foretold is looking really bad. So that's the good news. Discard again. I've still got a glass casket I don't need. Doing nothing over here. Erebos' Intervention. Cling to dust. Okay. Somebody somebody lost to rogues too many times. There are I already see three ways to hate on graveyard. <laughs> somebody had a bad rogue experience. Alright. Let's send out the omen. Because we can still draw an untapped land and play this omen. Or we can do this omen into Eorion if we're feeling aggro. Nice. Let's send these at the Liliana first. The opponent might kill the Solemn. If they kill the Solemn, we might draw the land. We also, of course, want to blink this. Alright. Heartless Act. There's the land. Feels good. Take that, Liliana. Payback is coming. Graveyard is 5, but Liliana can't minus 3 to kill the Yorian here, so that's nice. Ah, there's a helicopter outside my window. Must be that ride to Vegas I ordered. What, you guys don't have you guys don't have private helicopters on your Uber app? Must be a special thing. Mystical Dispute. Nice. Alright. Prepare for the value gasm. Is that last card a Mystical Dispute from the opponent? We haven't seen a blue card yet. Alright. Fair enough. We'll find another. Don't need you guys. High impact cards only, Baron. High impact cards only. Hmm. Got some work to do. Still a commanding position. ECD for nothing. Oh wait, that hits the omen. My bad. Not nothing. How dare I say it was nothing. I'll hang on to Baron. We might draw something to bounce to our own hand with him. Now what's in your graveyard? Nothing. But there's this Liliana that will go to your graveyard if I hit you a few more times. Let's see if we can find a solution. Skyclave Apparition. Yay! Good job. Good job, team. I'm so proud of this community. Bye. I'm a survivor. Now we can let that now we can let that pesky Elspeth Conquer's death go off. No fear. Opponent pulls a land. They can cling. So gotta get that draw from the cling. Mm, they're not gonna do it. Not yet. I think we're ahead on cards. I'm just gonna try to scry to another Yorian because that should just about end the game.
I'd like to attack you now. There we go. Baron Bouncing Apparition gives the opponent a 4-4. Not the finest moment. So this says, at the beginning of your end step, if a permanent was put into your hand from the battlefield this turn, draw a card. So yeah, I would have to bounce this, give them a 4-4, then I could draw a card. Kind of lame. Let's just say go. We've got Castle, we've got Tome, we've got Omen. Got a lot of things to figure out how to have an excellent hand next turn. Opponent bring in the cling. They're just clinging to dust, man. The more you tighten your grip, the more star systems will slip through your fingers. Rankle! We're getting pranked again! Alright. I did not expect some rankle action. And Tome! Good sequence. Looking good. Ooh, ooh, feeling feisty too. Let's see what it does. Each player discards a card. Lame. All right, I'll draw now then. Hopefully draw something cool. Perfect. Not cool is what I kind of meant. So I just have something easy to discard. Play this omen. Sky Noodle, baby. Good night. <laughs> Good night, brah. You gonna die. Hit him in the face. Bring the glory up. Oh, wait, do this first. Because why the heck wouldn't you? Bounce that sucker, because we can. Yorian! Skoi Nomad! Would you like to keep playing this game, or are you good? Could have had a free scry off the tome. I just, I mean, I don't have to reset this either. Yeah, why not? Submit seven. Seven? So the opponent gets a 4-4 four, four from the Apparition, but the Apparition exiles the Tome, and the Baron bounces the 4-4. Four, four. It's so awesome. We can also uh, use Baron to bounce Yorian if we absolutely wanted to, but I don't think that's going to be necessary. Oh, hi. Hi there. Hi. Yep. Sky noodled. On the draw, no removal really. I'd like to count on Baron, but you can't count on the double blue card with one island. I'm still keeping it. This is the extra island. We do have plays for the first two turns. So we're keeping, but I'm nervous. When the opponent plays turn one fervent champion, I will be scared, but they did not. They did not turn one fervent champion. Interesting. Rakdos Croxa. What do we discard? Discard the planes. We'll get another. Gotta move it. <laughs> Gotta move it off of, like, the companion text now blocks it. I don't know if you guys have noticed that. It's a thing. Birth. Crocs of me again, I dare ya. I'll discard this plane so fast. You won't know what hit ya. Chandler? Chandler? Alright. Got our wall. Got our Baron. Excellent little tempo play. Let's see, this says at the beginning of your end step. So if we Prince, bounce the Baron, bring it back, target our own Prince, then we would not draw the card, tragically. All right, so do we need to get rid of the Magnetic Chandler or do we save the Glass Casket for the Croxa? 
This definitely creates a lot of Crocs of Fuel. It lets the opponent dig through their deck. But I think we're better off getting Solemn on the board, to be honest. It's a very expensive play. Sometimes you just have to jump through the window of it because it makes your other expensive plays more playable by fetching a land. I'm I love Chandler. I'm kind of I'm kind of addicted to activating it. So when the opponent plays it against me, I'm very much like I have to kill it. But there are a lot of times where the cards they reveal aren't that great. So here's a Murderous Rider. It's going to take three mana this turn to cast. Even if they target Solemn, I get to draw a card. So it's not like they got to carefully pace and play their removal spell ideally. So I shouldn't be that afraid of it. All right. Orion. Well. Hmm. Now I do feel like I can shove it in the box because I can always replace it later. We don't have anything on the board for our Yorion, which is terrible. So let's shove Chandler in the box. Let's Gry try to dig up some omens, something here. Yeah, good Scry, good Scry, everybody. That Scry was going to go poorly. I'm also thinking I should go back to the beginning of this game. I never should have played this. I might actually be able to make the Angels this game, which is something that happens so rarely I almost always take the conservative route, play this on turn one, and here, this game, I think that was a mistake. Because we're getting ground out because we're flooding out. Alright, there's a draw that we needed. And a prince. Nice. So, do we give the opponent back the Magmatic Chandler? I don't think so. I'll take your Croxa when the time comes, but for now, we'll just run this Omen into the ground. Oh my goodness, I'm never shuffling this deck. <laughs> Look how much land we put on the bottom, that's a huge draw. It was bound to happen eventually, and it just did. We drew the right card, baby. We're also on 7. On 8 mana, you can buy Yorion and play Yorion. Discard two cards. You suck. Hateful, I tell you. But, as far as turns go, that wasn't too bad. There are five cards left. All right. ECD onto the battlefield. Giant, you can go. Yorian attack. Empty-handed, but we can buy Yorian next turn. Nice draw. Nice draw. Maze Mind, get me out of this empty handed, no value predicament. Rescue me. Liliana. All right, they're going to kill the Yorian? That means ECD gets it back. I don't know if that's where you want to be. So, we can play, we don't have to buy the Yorian and do that loop here, but if we do, we get to exile Liliana, which also not bad. We end up with this tome stuck in our hand. The problem with that is the Croxa. The Croxa's, well, the Croxa's not necessarily coming back, is it? The opponent would need this to be a removal spell, which it might be. The thing is, the Liliana doesn't do much, but we still have to get rid of it eventually. And the ECD right now gets a Yorian already, which is a big deal. I still think we should just do this. I don't like the Tome being stuck in my hand. Might have to discard it, but I think this is still the right play. Never cross paths again. Yorian! <laughs> I hear you like some sky noodles with your sky noodles on top of your sky noodles with a side of sky noodles. 
This is this is this might be one of the more beautiful Shuffler is fine screenshots of all time. Right here. Just mm. 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 I'm discarding the tome for the mm. Nothing but sky noodle spam for the rest of the game. Endless sky noodles for all, for everyone. That's nice. That's nice. Good play. Good play. You're really going to hate this. <laughs> Into the box, Croxa. Nice cards. Happy dance, happy dance. <laughs> oh, that's a draw three off the top. Epic gamer moments continue. ECD will have its way with you, though. Even if you find a way to kill this, <laughs> it's happening again. More Chandler. Magmatic Chandler. Ah, uh, yeah. Attack with the yours. Feels nice. Play the app. I got an app for that. Other Yorian. <laughs> oh my god, this is disgusting. Make it stop. Make it all stop. Do I bounce the cross the Croxa casket? I'm gonna do it. Let the who cares about this charming prince anyway? When we can do things this broken. Because now the casket, <laughs> the casket can pick off the token. The app can pick off the Chandler. I'll take everything from you. Everything. <laughs> yes. All the toys are here. Could you be so heartless? Well, you gotta give it to them. They fought their way through all the Yorians and they're still playing magic. It's their their fortitude is impressive. You gotta give it up for the fortitude. But it's not over. <laughs> How many heartless acts? I think that's all of them, right? I think that's four heartless acts. What a card. Nope, three heartless acts. There was an eliminate, a sneaky eliminate in there. Here's Croxa. Croxa, everybody. Croxa's here. They have they have ground through this admirably, but eventually, eventually, Yorian is gonna freaking break you, dude. The Sky Noodle always triumphs. You should all galvanize and become one with the Sky Noodle. Let's just hold this. I think if I held, finding spots to hold lands might keep the opponent from taking them from me, or uh, taking good cards out of my hand, which they have the last two turns. Dun, dun, dun. The time has come to, don't hold back. World. The time has come to, your Rion. World. Time has come to, Come on back to me, buddy. Oh, it's so good. It's so good. Boing. 
Yes, please. Thassa seems fun. <laughs> Thassa seems very fun here. Yep, just a few lands off the top, and it all fell apart. It all fell apart, and Rakdos has been dispatched. Yori on. World. The time has come to push the button. No removal, but a lot of value. Let's go. I don't want to draw more land. So I can scry, or at least try to scry away land right away. Haven't played this against mono red or rogues. Either of those are matchups I'm like, I don't know about that. So let's see. Let's see if anybody is ready to bring the mono red or the rogues today. To bring the thunder. Prince. Sure. It's not land. There, there are definitely worse draws I could have. Blue mana. All right, against blue mana, we're getting the tome on the battlefield right away. A very counterable card that could be a ton of draw power. All right, blue white. Yeah, I'm not scrying. I am not scrying today. We're just going to be drawing a ton of cards. Let the grind begin. We don't know yet. Is it going to be a... It's not a Yorian pile. So this might be a traditional blue-white control deck. Against that, what are we trying to do really? Like, what's the game plan? Well, first I'll go for some ramp. Resolved easy. No essence scatter. We do have some mystical disputes that can help. We've got the Yorians. Those have to be the must counter threats. I guess the rest of the time we need to, and this sounds terrible, we have to find ways to pressure them with a little bit of beatdown from very bad creatures. That card, this card, man, it's everywhere. It's everywhere, all right? I may as well, I guess I may as well apparition this thing. So that they don't take a card from my hand, they don't get to see my hand, they get to wonder what my hand does. That's fine. Yeah, we don't have ways to attack their hand, so we just have to, if they're going to run counter spells and hand hate, we just have to wear it down and then get Yorian to happen. Emiria's Call is also a potent threat. Like, it, it's going to require an answer every time, either a counter or a shatter or extinction event. Okay. Opponent makes their 3 3. What's their plan against me? I have a larger deck. I can probably get more value. Yeah. But neither of us can really stop the opponent's Yorians unless I find Mystical Dispute. So that's got to be it, right? Who can have the better Yorians? Another Emiria's call. There's a Mystical Dispute. We could shock we could bolt in an Emiria's call to play an Emiria's call but if we just wait one more turn that won't be a problem so and we'll get more value yeah so let's go fetch planes oh Elspeth Conqueror's death is going to be key in these Yorian back and forths so we need to find that card as well I think I just pass and cycle Triome and draw with Tome the wall can cut off the 3-3, so I'm not overly worried about that. Uh, this is going to be a grindy game, though. Five open mana in a blue-white deck. It makes you think, and the opponent is thinking. Let's draw. <laughs> Is there anything on my face? That was what we call a big one. All right. Sorry. Sorry, opponent. 
I appreciate... No, that was yesterday. Never mind. Last casket shows up. Emiria's call. Front side. Front side baby. Here comes the pressure. My wall is indestructible. How about them apples? We want to keep the tome around because we want to reset it with a Yorian. Oh, we scrying now. Oh, oh, they don't like the angel approach. We scrying now. Shatter the sky. I get to keep my wall. It's like cheating. And I draw a card. That's so good. That is so good. Oh my gosh. I'm going to keep so much pressure on them this way. So I think I can let the Mystical Dispute shield down. There's nothing to Yorian. And that's definitely what we have to think about countering. If they even play it, which... They don't have to. Again, again. Do it again. Do that shatter thing again. I was really enjoying it. Yes. Ask and you shall receive. Castle, nice. Here's a Charming Prince. One with two mana open here. Maybe they have a Heartless Act. Sad Robot. Land. Don't need the land. Take the Sad Robot. Again. Go ahead. Cast Negate. I dare you. Nice. Omen. Yep, hold this for Yorian. I was going to say that's a giveaway that we have the dispute, but we have Tome. That would hold priority. Two to the top. We've got a mono Shatter the Sky Gamer over here. Potentially. Doom foretold. I mean, cool. I, I am down. I am down for some Doom Foretold. I don't play it in my deck, but my deck is pretty ready for some Doom Foretold action. We've got stuff to sacrifice, bruh. Yeah. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Buy Yorian, play Yorian, Mystical Dispute. Start the loop. It sounds really good. And they don't have another shatter or they would have played it. There is a little bit of things that could go wrong. We don't have an omen. And... So, I don't think it's right in that spot to drop the Orion. Let's, let's go over it for a second. I don't think it's... I, I think that there's too much that can go wrong. Because if we buy this, play this, then the only permanent to sacrifice here is a Tome, which we can sacrifice, but... Let's see. If the opponent does find another board wipe or an extinction event, something bad, and makes us get rid of a bunch of this stuff, and then we end up losing the Yorian or using the Tome to the Doom Foretold, like, we get... We reduce our permanent count a lot, and then we have to rebuild it anyway. So I think the better play is to play Solemn, continue to increase our resources, play Birth, continue to increase the resources, and play the other Tome. So we just have a ton of stuff on the board. So we are way, like their Doom Foretold is way behind hitting something that we care about because we can just give away the Birth again, at least, or give away a loaded Tome, or give away Solemn. And I think that's a lot better. And I think that will... I. I think the game is very much won since the opponent had to start using cards like this to deal with the angels. But uh, yeah, you get the idea. Rank 61.
And we are back. The post-game wrap. My God. It's beautiful. It's so beautiful. It's amazing. How could I even propose a change? 6-0. and oh. Best win rate graph in the history of win rate graphs. Up to 61 rank mythic undefeated small sample size blah 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 shut up every youtube video in the history of magic youtube videos is a small sample size bros it's up to you now if you're curious on the deck is good or bad it's up to you to go do more research or build it and play it yourself gather more data share it with the community in the comments i never get frustrated when people share their experiences playing a deck i get 100 percent snarky when people share their experiences without even touching the deck or they just want to belittle mine that's fun anyway haters can't live with them can't youtube without them so what's up here is there anything i would change not from today's video it's working. You got to keep rolling. And now that we've won six in a row, we might get into the magic.gg decklist page. Hype. I'm sure I won't be the only one playing this deck. I can't even say for sure. It was me, of course. CGB. But uh, I recommend this to any of my blue-white evil control mage fans. It is so good to see the Sky Noodle just thriving in this Omnath-less, Uro-less, Krasis-less, Nissa-less environment. Uh, just just beautiful. I do think the next step for the meta, there are two pivots, right, that can work against this deck. Number one, Ugin. Ghost fire. That guy. That is really good against this deck. I would expect to see more decks that find a way to play Ugin. And then the other one is bringing back the Ember Cleave decks because this deck doesn't have instant speed interaction and Cleave can go right over the top of it on a good draw. So also those Ember Cleave decks I mentioned are probably decent against Ghost Fire, his greatest creation. So um, I expect the next pivot of the, of the meta to involve some ramp for the Ugins or even mutate into Ugin, something, and then Ember Cleave to punish that end of this. So watch out, because we didn't get to try this against Ember Cleave, and we didn't get to try this against Rogues. And the meta, a good healthy meta, shifts. It twists and turns, and when it comes back to those decks, this deck may need to adapt. I have to play the matchups more to know, but immediately I look at it as a curve of tap-out threats, and I think... That can be exploited. That can be exploited by the Cleave and the Demir Rogues on their good draws. So those are my fears. However, as far as going up against Rakdos and food and all these new mid-range piles, Yorian says, bring it on. Don't hold back. World, time has come to push the button. World, 